Hello everyone, this is Bradley. In the past, I've done a light up animation and a demonstration of how animation node is controlling the light property. Many people were curious about how it was made. So here in this tutorial, I want to teach more generally about how to control the multiple lights using animation nodes procedurally. So let's start. So here we're in Blender and let's turn on the render view so that we can see. And basically what we're trying to do is I have an empty which function as a fourth and by controlling these empties, I'm deciding, oh, where the light bulb is on, where the light bulb is off. So by basically animating these empties, you're generating, going to creating a animation that some lights is uh, basically a series of lights is going to be turned on. Basically, this is the point. Okay. And uh, I want to discuss this, uh, how to make this basic setup. So I have a basic curve. You just shift A to get a basic curve. And then there is a node in my preset library is called instancing on spline. I'm instancing maybe whatever amount of points on these splines. And I'm going to instance the same amount of uh, light bulb. And finally, putting all this kind of instance light bulb uh, to the points that's instanced on these splines. And finally, this is a tricky part of the function. I've explained in shader motion graphics, but I just uh, uh, a little bit of recap this entire thing because this is actually very surprisingly and very kind of tricky. So talking about uh, our light bulb, this light, so I have an empty that contains the model of all this kind of light bulb. This is uh, grabbed from Blender Swap. The link is provided in the description. So you have this light bulb and I don't want to change anything specifically while instancing. This is multiple objects and I don't want to combine this object. So instead I'm just instancing the collection. So right click instancing two scenes I'm generating an empty that has a light bulb okay and then I'm instancing these empties by copy four objects so I'm generating all this kind of thing on the whatever place uh, one thing I want to remind you you can see these empties one meter large and the light bulb is just uh, less than one tenth probably so it's when you're instancing on spine sometimes it looks kind of very ugly where you are actually overemphasized the size of all these kind of empty, which is really just ugly. You can definitely turn off overlays, but you also turn off the overlay of original other things. And the tweaking all these kind of values is kind of very crap. So there's additional method that you can just uh, turn the size down like 0 0.1, so that make the size very minimum. So you turn on the overlay, it's not changing. But by recopying these four objects, you're copying the all the kind of setting, including all the sides of empty as well. If you do not copy four objects while you're instancing, you're really just the instancing the empties without doing anything specifically. So you have to copy the four objects to really instance in the collection from the empty. Okay. Then it comes to a very important part of uh, affecting the all these kind of shaders, is that I'm using a preset which is called object color transition to control the object color of all these empties with the fourth. So if you look at, you select the empties and you go to the viewport display, you can see this object color is white. And the other object, if it's there outside the fourth, you can see the fourth. If they're outside the fourth, then their object color is black. So this is what happens. And I only affect the offset without affecting the fourth width. Because if I affect the fourth width, you can see there is a fading of colors from the fourth. Some, in some cases, I want uh, all this kind of uh, light up animation to be abrupt. So I only affect the offset. It's basically the same as the sides up and down, things like that. Okay. And if I'm affecting all these kind of object color, and this really turns to be a very interesting part because I wasn't thinking this is possible. Uh, I wasn't thinking this is possible. And uh, in shaders, if we go to the original object in shaders, uh, if I'm putting the object colors uh, into the map range or whatever stuff, actually you can directly control the, ob the object color uh, to the emission, but then you won't be able to change all these kind of strengths. So I just put a map range so that I can change the strengths um, separately. So by increasing this, the map range, you're actually increasing, uh, increasing the 
emission strength separately for the light bulb and the filament because I have also a different material for the filament as well. Why they have to be different, I don't know. And you can just change all this kind of value differently. Uh, depends on your needs. And uh, there are also other colors, but basically it's just the kind of layer weight in order to make the kind of the center part to be transparent, the edge part more like kind of reflective or other things. You can deal with these shaders in other cases. What I want to really talk about is just the object color. And this interesting feature is basically I'm controlling the object color of these empties, but the object color of these empties will be passed down into all these kind of individual objects within the collection and to influence the shader, which is very fantastic at this moment. Uh, in If you're using cycles, then you're already finishing all that because the emission shader in cycles is real emission light, real emitting light. But in EV, this however is not true. So if I turn on a floor, you can see the light is not really shining on the ground. You have the kind of reflect reflectance, but you don't real ha you don't have the real light. You have to really get a point. So if you compare the point of light does, then point of light is really lighting up the entire scene, but the emission strength is just a nothing. Uh, if you turn the balloon, it becomes even nothing. So this is kind of thing that we have to deal with if you're using EV. And in such kind of case, you want to have multiple lights, uh, and you are, should you want to be able to control this light differently. And this is the top. This is a real topic today. So here to, so firstly we need to instance of the kind of lights. And you can use the object instancer. Of course, you need to use the object instancer. But what I want to say, you can ins you can copy the uh, our source light, the light that we created earlier, or you can directly use the lights from the defaults, the point uh, the point lamp. So you don't necessarily create any lights for these kind of cases because it will create any everything for you. So if I put it get less lens into instances, automatically generates a the same amount of light in the same locations uh, by using the same matrix then we're instancing all these kind of points and lamps that we instance into these locations these are kind of trivial things and then let's just take the like, uh, four lamps in total so we get all these kind of four lamps so that we can see everything clearly and now uh, the problem is that we're having is kind of point lamp is kind of too shiny, shiny on the ground or other things, a lot causing a lot of kind of problems. You can also take the roughness of where's my shader editors. You can also turn on the roughness of the ground so that it looks kind of more normal. Yeah, this definitely looks nicer. So that it looks kind of nicer. Another thing is you want to lift the point lamp a little bit up instead of perfectly on the ground. So let's just take a offset matrices and increase a little bit so that you can see it's kind of better. But these are kind of a minor thing. What I really would like to see is you want to may you may want to reduce the intensity of the lights or changing the color of all these kind of things. But uh, obviously you're not going to do that separately, manually, or um, by hand, because it will make the things very painful. And especially we are using a kind of a procedural approach to generate all these kind of things. What if I decided to change the amount of lights in the future? Then you, I re you either will rewrite all the information and you have to do all this kind of thing again, manually, separately. This is not feasible, so you have to do that procedurally. So we have to use the animation node to control this kind of multiple lights. Also, we have to use the animation node to control uh, when the so when uh, which light will actually shine, which light will not shine, and so on and so forth. Okay. So here I need to use a node which is called attributes output, object attribute output. And because recently we started to have geometry nodes, and they also use an attribute system. So you might think, okay, they are the same thing. But they are not the same thing. So please don't mistake on these two kind of things. So this attribute output is doing something differently. 
So I have a cube. I have a modifier. So let's take the bevel modifier. If I have billions of cubes, I want to control these bevels uh, at the same time, then I have to use many different other methods. But so what you can do is just right click, copy the data pass, and paste this information into these expression lines, select the object, and then you can, it will say values has the wrong type. And since we're changing all this kind of bevel amounts, you just take the float input. So now, by using this object attribute output, we're changing the modified values. And this rule also applies to the multiple object as well. So what we can do in this case is that I'm going to put all this kind of object into the object. And it will immediately say, keys not found. Okay, because it's, we don't have the bevel modifier. But we're going to use the same principle for this kind of power and stuff to take the energy. Now it, uh, it causes a an error. It says attributes not found. And this is the issue that we haven't found earlier with the bevel modifier. So you may wonder, okay, what happens? Is that um, it's fine that if you're working with kind of blue or even orange um, or kind of orange properties. But if you're using working with kind of green properties, the address to reach all these kind of parameter or attribute uh, is a little bit different. You can see if you mouse hang on, it will say it's a, it's a, a block data block which is called object data property. And in this case, the way to solve that is just type a data at the front. And then it says object has wrong type and you just take this, the correct type, which is float. Then you can get all these kind of correct values. So this is how we are going to do this. Here, I want to add, this is not only for the lights, but it also for basic curve or other things. As for any kind of green data. Because if you look at the basic curve, there is also a kind of curve. It's also object data property, which means whatever kind of thing you, pro you checked, for example, this Boolean input or this vector input, you always need to type a data at the front so that to really reach the, uh, the attribute successfully within this place. And to control this light, so basically just use the fourth. Um, so you can use the evaluate fourth, change that to list, use transformation matrix. And I'm going to use the matrix, which is on the ground instead of being lifted up. Put the same object fourth, put the strength into values. And I'm going to turn on these multiple values. So now we don't really see anything. But if you really check about that, then you can see if the only when the light is within the fourth, then it does not only affect the shader, but it also affect the ground. Because we have a real light being instanced and being lighting up using this method. You can, of course, uh, increase the light intensity by using the map range, as I have shown earlier within shader as well. So you can turn that to 50, then you can get all kind of a result. Or turn that down. This is complete, this is the procedural things, and then you can still freely increase all this kind of amount so that everything is still being kept procedural. And this is why you need the animation to do all this kind of function. Okay. There are a few more things that I would like to add. Uh, is that uh, you can definitely, the same principles of these object attributes, outputs, and the, within the data block uh, can be applied to many other settings for this kind of all these kind of shadow, custom, distance, radius, specular power. Uh, most of values are just a float, so you don't necessarily to worry about anything. But there are certain types which is kind of very tricky. For example, you can also change the light type as well. So you take the object, right click, copy data pass, you take a type, and as we learned earlier, you need to type a data at front. And how can we actually change the data type? The data type is actually a text input. So you put a text it will be kept the same the value has a wrong type. It's actually not it's not a really wrong type, it's just saying you have a wrong value in such kind of scenario. How should you do is you need to capitalize all the and the type all this kind of name. By typing the capitalize the sun, you're changing all the lights into the sun. 
and you can type the spot you can type the into area you can type that to port but uh, make sure you type uh, you type the capitalize because if you type a sun then it will not be recognized you type a sun no recognize you have to type everything customized capitalized so that you have a correct type and because the sun is so strong i think i'm just going to change everything into points so this is an example this however does not really finish uh, there is another type which is very bizarre which is called a color so you call the data pass and you control v with the data color you need to define the color so in animation nodes you may find there is a color input and you put the color inside it always says the value has the wrong type and you all change these colors it does not work the reason is within blender you actually has kind of all these kind of color are factors factors of color it causes the kind of confusing but this, this is what actually happens so what do you actually need to do is to combine uh, not use the color but the combined vector and whatever you are trying to do is basically xyz means rgb this is how bizarre the color looks but this is very awkward because i don't know the actually the rgb of an orange sometimes this is a confusion part and I have to admit that this makes things a little bit awkward, but sometimes you just have to do this. A method that I would say is if you combine a color, uh, if you get a color input, you decombine the color. Err, how should I say? You decompose the color. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You separate color. Yes, separate the color is the right term. And then make sure that you keep everything as RGB and then re input it into XYZ. So that now you can use the color inputs, basically scroll the color that you want. And one more important thing uh, is that you can actually use the random color in these scenarios. So let's turn on these multiple values and let's turn on the multiple random colors. So you have different random colors and by taking the get this lens into the count you can have as many different color as you want i also made a preset about the random color but these are uh, uh, different stories okay um the basically difference is my preset has more settings like the hue saturation lightness instead of having nothing but just a random color this tutorial has been basically finished i just would like to add one more thing so there's a twist of filament that I've made. And we let's turn off this light bulb. So there is a twist of filament that I've made. You can see this this structure. And this is procedural and you have seen this within the demonstration. Uh, it's it, the setup is kind of fairly easy. You just to put all this kind of distribute you take a spirals and use the list to transform 180 degree. And combine these two vertices group together and form a splines finally output this mesh. The good part is we have this light bulb, right? And you put this twisted elements, a twisted filament uh, into the light bulb. And the things we're using the empty to instance the entire mesh, then the this filament will be instanced as well. So now you can see all this kind of filament being instanced. So you can change the inner structure very easily procedurally and that's also a reason why you, i use this light bulb inst, uh, instancing collection method to do all this kind of stuff so uh, this is really all about it so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'll probably see you next time bye bye